just want to say a few words on the so-called Russian election. Um, so-called because it's obviously an orchestrated event to show a facade of democracy. Um, I mean, it's with China, you know, you get an authoritarian state, which is what it is. There's not even a facade of elections. In Russia, it's likewise a totalitarian state, but somehow the Kremlin still feels the need to put on the show. And one almost wonders why bother? Why bother even putting on the facade of an election? Uh, Putin got 88%. Um, his runner-up was uh, Nikolai Karatsunov, uh, the official communist candidate. Uh, then there was Leonid Slutsky and Vladislav Davankov. Davankov have apparently made some watered-down comments about peace but avoided the word war. Um, the only credible anti-war candidate, uh, Mr. Let me get the man's name correct. Just bear with me a second. Um, usually when I do these things, I, I have a whole sort of piece. So uh, rather than reading it all out, um, yeah, he'd been um, not poisoned. He'd been uh, taken off the ballot. Uh, Mr. 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 Uh, where are we here? Yeah, anyway, I'll go back to that. But uh, of course, um, Navalny was poisoned. It looks like uh, Yulia Navalnaya will now be leading her husband's cause. A very brave woman. I mean, I think she's going to have to need the sort of iron resolve that her husband had. Um, but it just goes, uh, this is an interesting little piece in the eye. Um, yes, we won. On the Russian election there. I remember when RT was still broadcasting in this country and you know I wanted to throw up hearing British journalists uh, coerce with that Kremlin mouthpiece. The last Russian election in 2018 they were talking about it as if it was an actual election you know and then, then we have the United Russia candidate I think that was Putin's party at the time or what he um, fronted as fronted the United Russia party if I've got that right but they were talking about it like he was a candidate like there was any sort of credible opposition um in previous years there's been mavericks put up just to make putin look kind of normal the likes of the late vladimir zhirinovsky who was an ultra nationalist um hardliner you know and quite uh unhinged character in my opinion he famously rode a donkey around in sort of political sketches he made misogynistic comments about uh the the woman candidate that year but um yeah i mean it's you know kremlin propaganda will try and put out think this is some sort of consensus for putin you cannot have a credible judgment of a leader's popularity when you have an atmosphere of fear now i saw an interesting thing recently in the war there was a prank done in a moscow elevator and it showed basically the pranks just put up a picture of putin and the response of the people going into the lift were annoyance, uh, amusement. Uh, and I quote, who put this SHIT here? Now, that's interesting because if the BBC or another Western outlet does a poll on the streets of Moscow, there's a reasonable chance that you'll get kind of that reactionary nationalism, particularly with older Russians. But I wonder, is that from fear? You know, we better not tell the Western journalists what we really think. Whereas this prank, you know, they didn't know they were being filmed, so maybe that's more revealing. Um, this is a picture in Times. It shows Russians um, in Paris, Tbilisi, Berlin, London and Moscow turned up to vote in the uh, many unspoiled ballots. This was uh, partly an incentive by Yulia Nav Navalnaya and other um, opposition figures. That's a picture. Um, Putin's on course to equal or surpass Stalin's record. Stalin was in power for 29 years, and Putin currently 24 years. And you know, it's barely worth counting that four year hiatus where Dmitry Medvedev was president. I think it's widely considered now that that tan democracy, um, Putin was the real power. I mean, at the time that was the speculation. Well, rather at the time as the Guardian journalist Luke Harding pointed out, there was Kremlin watchers were had this guessing game as to who had the real power, but even then, it was widely believed in Russia and abroad that Putin had the power. 
although he was nominally prime minister and Medvedev was president. I think it's obvious that Medvedev was just put into that position to kind of put out the facade of a democracy. Um, and then, of course, in 2012, Putin became president again. So I don't really count those four years. Um, if we look at it from Putin coming into power with Yeltsin's resignation, New Year's Eve 2000, um, to now, that's 24 years, almost a quarter of a century. As president, a little bit less, um, 20 years, not excluding those four years that Medvedev was president. But really, um, the longest serving Russian leader now since Stalin, he surpassed Brezhnev's, what was it, 18 years for Leonid Brezhnev. Um, and Putin is to be proving to be every bit as ruthless as Stalin. His body count isn't quite as high, but um, yeah, I mean, Russia today is an absolute totalitarian state. Um, can Putin be given any credit? Well, I suppose one could say that he rebounded the Russian economy somewhat after the Yeltsin years. He gave Russia a sense of national pride that was lost in the Yeltsin years. So perhaps the first few terms Putin can get some credit. But he is what he is. Um, he is an irredentist dictator who has caused misery to millions of people. Um, you know, notwithstanding what he's done in Ukraine, the crimes against humanity in Ukraine and Georgia and Chechnya um, and Syria for that matter, um, what he has done in Russia, you know, look at this of opposition politicians and figures who've been poisoned or disappeared. Look at the journalists who've been murdered. Putin has created an atmosphere of fear. This is his legacy. And when he eventually dies, whether it be from assassination or natural death, um, that should be his legacy. No doubt there will be those uh, revisionists, Russian nationalists, and some people in other parts of the world who have kind of been taken up by Russian propaganda, whether it be infiltration from the Wagner Group in West Africa or this delusion that Putin is somehow the bulwark against Western power. I say delusion because Russia's interests have always been self-serving. Um, there's nothing benef benevolent about what Russia's doing in other countries. Um, I don't think there's much more to add to this, really. It is what it is. It's a depressing situation. Um, I have huge respect for Russian dissidents. Alexei Navalny was the most famous, but he wasn't the only one. And I think it would be a mistake to sort of think Navalny's dead, that's awful. And I forget that there are still a lot of Russian dissidents in prison. Um, his wife, of course, is bravely campaigning on. Unfortunately, she and um, Mrs. Zelensky apparently haven't seen eye to eye. That's a great pity because both women have a vested interest in seeing the end of Putin. Um, apparently, this is because Mrs. Zelensky holds a grievance that, and not just Mrs. Zelensky, but Ukrainians in general, that Navalny had some questionable views on on Crimea. But I, I think they they should look beyond that. You know, the past is the past, and Navalny moved on from that. He evolved his views. Yes, he held some typically nationalistic Russian views, but then as the invasion happened and he turned increasingly vocal against Putin. He also condemned the war. So, you know, I think it's unfair to hold that against Navalny when he did evolve his views on the matter. And I think it would be a mistake for Ukrainians to turn against dissident Russians. I mean, they have a shared interest and I am staunchly pro-Ukraine, but I, I think that would be a little bit, um, well, how can I say, I, I think it would be a little bit dogmatic to polarise dissident Russians when they're the very people who are trying to stand up to Putin within Russia. If anything, they should form a united front um, because they have a vested interest in seeing the end of Putin. I honestly think any moderate that replaces Putin, I mean, it won't happen anytime soon, but, you know, I don't know if there could be much worse than Putin because you would need to have a hardliner who has that same irredentist worldview but even they wouldn't have the name recognition that Putin does. Um, any Russian leader is going to put Russia first, naturally. But I don't know. I just hope it is a matter of time. I, th I, As long as Putin is in power, this continent, Europe, 
I think, is in a volatile situation. I think that man is the biggest threat to Europe since Hitler. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. Uh, Macron's been up in the ante talking about the possibility of troops on the ground, as has some of the Baltic leaders. Um, is it brinkmanship or is there a real possibility we could be heading to an even bigger conflict? I, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, uh, one thing about Trump, whilst it's easy to see him as a Putin puppet and I've certainly described him that way. Um, the other thing about Trump is he's erratic. He's not entirely predictable. That may have a good side insofar as he may, you know, sound off about being like he'd be a Putin puppet at this point. But maybe when he becomes president again, if he becomes president again, he might change his tune. Maybe it's all games. I don't know. I don't think it's good for the morale of the Ukrainians. Um, and I think it's important that an American president talks the way he does about NATO, but all I can hope is it's games to confuse Putin. I don't know. Um, but yet no one should be in, under any illusion. This was not a free and fair election. Putin is a dictator and his record in Russia is brutal. You know, Kremlin propagandists must not be allowed to rewrite history and whitewash what has happened here. Um, so I don't think there's much more to add to that. I'm sure I'll think of something, but for now, it is what it is. Um, the dictator of Russia gets another facade of an election. <laughs>